So on the bench today, I have got an HP 8116A pulse and function generator. And I am not going to show you the repair. And the reason is it's already working. I've already repaired it. Unfortunately, um, I don't have video footage because I forgot to press a button at the time. Um, and I didn't think you'd really enjoy watching a black screen with me just talking. So why have I got it on the bench today? Well, because I wanted to share with you a mistake that I made when I was doing the diagnosis on this. So this was coming, I think it was error 14, it might have been error 7 or something, but whatever. Um, and I looked in the kind of manual and it pointed its way at all sorts of dodgy stuff that I really hoped wasn't the problem. There's there's like some custom chips in here like voltage controlled oscillators and uh, um, some level controls and, and various uh, things. Um, three custom chips and then some difficult to get hold of digital to analog converters. And they were all in the target area that could be faulty. But leading into those, there were some things like operational amplifiers and things that could also be faulty, so I hoped for the best. Anyway, I began my tests, as I usually do, by getting my multimeter out, getting my two, getting my two probes, and uh, connecting this one to ground, and looking where I could test the voltages. Because we always test voltages first. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, of course, that the power supply section is the section with all the energy in it. So that energy equals likelihood to break down. So, you know, there's a good chance the power supply could fail. That's that's a, particularly with older equipment like this, that's a common place to find a fault. So good place to start. The second reason is, of course, that without a working power supply, you can't actually test the rest of the circuit. Now, I knew in this case that some of the power supply at least was working because I'd got error codes and things being reported. But, um, you yeah, know, we still need to test the, uh, test the power supplies working. And right there is the problem. What I just said, test the power supplies working. That isn't actually what we test. What we test is, or should test, is that all of the power supply voltages are present and correct on the board. So what's the difference? Well, one is testing the output of the power supply. The other is testing that that output from the power supply got correctly onto the board and can be utilized by the circuit. And literally, that is the problem. So if we look on this board, we can see various test points marked. And it does actually tell you in the instructions to measure them at that point. So we come in here and we click on, let's say, that one just there. And I measure that and it reads 14.990. It's a 15 volt test point, so that's absolutely you know bang on, really, as far as I'm concerned. And this one just here, that reads 24.01, and they all measure absolutely fine. So with that, I then proceeded through the rest of the fault finding. Now, after doing various tests, it starts off by the way by test telling you to check the voltages. And then in the fault finding guide, it then has you test various voltages on some of these components and, and things weren't really adding up. And one of the components very early in the test is an operational amplifier. Now the operational amplifier is unfortunately under this ribbon cable, so I'm not going to show you that, but it's the same, same pin out as this chip here. And it drives the voltage controlled oscillator and for, um, it should have a particular output in kind of idle, if you like, and it didn't. It was miles off. So then I started chasing my tail around thinking whether the operational amplifier was faulty, is there something around the operational amplifier that's faulty, and so on. And I went around that circuit for quite a while um, with nothing making sense whatsoever. And I eventually tested the voltages, the supply voltages, on the operational amplifier, um, which should have been plus minus 15 volts, and they weren't. So instead of plus, plus 15 volts, I'd got minus 12 point something. So I got a negative on my positive rail, um, which obviously doesn't bode well at all. Um, so then I went back to here and examined these links a lot more carefully. And if we look at the links, like these, are, um, these are like a little ceramic package with a black stripe over them. I'm saying ceramic, they might not be ceramic, but anyway, they're a little package with... A black stripe on it so zero ohm links is what these are and you can still buy these by the way um, but um, I suddenly realized that two of them hadn't got zero ohm links in at all they were fuses 
And there is no fuse, by the way, shown on the circuit diagram. I kind of just hadn't noticed before. And uh, yeah, fuses. So of course, this one that's a white link now, you can guess. I tested that size, 24 volt. I tested this size, not 24 volts. The fuse are blown. Now these two, the plus and minus 24 volts, they really feed the output transistors, the, the things doing the final amplification for the actual output BNC connector on the front end, which is where there was a train wreck of uh, repair on this, by the way. Um, and when I opened this up, the heat sink was floating around loose inside the box, and uh, there was a packet of screws in a, in a plastic bag, also just loose inside the box, which kind of gives you a feel for the state of it. But anyway, um, yeah, so not 24 volts. So I replaced that with a link and turned it on again, and yeah, it all worked. You can guess, can't you? So clearly what had happened is the output transistors on this had uh, had a fault in that area, and someone had decided to repair that, and then when they did that, because they must have disconnected these two at the time, the plus 24 and the minus 24, they decided to replace them with fuses. Now, I kind of get why they did that, but it's a stupid thing to do, because in actual fact, the power supply on this is designed to detect an overcurrent situation and shut down um, and protect itself. So you think the fuses aren't doing anything useful. In fact, they're just being misleading in this case. They, they caused a different error message to appear. So um, I replaced that with a link because I... It's too tight to spend £5 buying a bag of 100 of these little zero-ohm links. And uh, went over here to where this heatsink is now. And the transistors have been put in so badly because the tracks had raised and everything like that on the other side that you couldn't even fit the heatsink. So I had to take all those transistors out. I replaced them with new old stock. Um, and there's a couple of lower powered transistors in there as well. And, uh, and carefully we worked everything so that um, I could actually fit the heatsink properly. And uh, there were some places where they'd used a single strand of wire, for example, in pl to, to bridge a connection. This is a high current, high power output. You need proper connections. These are thick bits of copper that have been replaced with, with piddling little ultra thin bits of wire. So I replaced all of that, um, put it back together again, and it worked. So nothing too much to even show in terms of repair, apart from how to put right uh, a board. But anyway, hopefully that slightly embarrassing anecdote will help you avoid similar problems. So when we say check voltages or check your power supply output, we don't mean check your power supply output at all. We mean make sure your voltages get to the board where they're going to be used. Um, of course, you're going to check the power supply, but make sure you check this other side as well. And usually my advice is, Check the power supply. If the voltages are wrong, disconnect the power supply from this side and then you isolate which side has the, the primary problem or you actually isolate whether, whether or not there's a problem in the power supply. But still, you still need to make sure your voltages are getting to here. So anyway, with that, um, I shall sign off for today and uh, wish you a good one and see you next time. Bye for now.